Hi everyone, this is CY once again. Thanks for joining uh, me today. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the WDD tools, right? Uh, recently I've downloaded the um, three printer version of WDD tools from uh, Thinkinverse, and um, this is the design which I've downloaded. I think this is uh, the most popular design, right? Um, it is very, very elegantly designed, right? There's a base for you to place your WDD. Right, I'll put the link in the description down below where I download this. So if you want, you can actually get yourself. Uh, if you have a 3D printer or if your friend has one, right, I highly recommend it. This is really easy. Um, I'll talk about later on the printing, print setting and things to look out for when you want to print something like this. So this is one of the WDDs which uh, I'm going to use for today's testing. And of course, the other one right, is the... Um, the spinning WDT tools we have, right? This is the one which spins, right? So as you can see, um, it, it comes in two parts. There's a base and there's this part which actually spins, right? And you can see the needles here, right? This is the needles. And if you compare to the needles from the 3D printer version, right? You can see that these needles, the 3D printer one, is a lot finer, right? As compared to this one, right? This one you can see uh, is, is quite thick. I think it's at least double the thickness, right? Versus this, right? So you can see this is a lot more um, flexible, right? This is not as flexible. Maybe it's because it's shorter and hence therefore, you know, it is a little bit more stiff as compared to the acupuncture needle. But definitely this is thinner, right? So we're going to test these two versions, right? And uh, to see whether it actually matches uh, which one actually, actually performs better in terms of uh, getting better extractions and of course today we're going to use the bottomless portal filter to test the shot to see uh, which extraction is better but this is not a definitely test because there are other factors that you, you, may, uh, you, may, you, you may you may mention that you know, it will affect the extraction so for today's uh, test we will try to be as consistent as possible so we will spend some time doing w after the grinding of course we will we'll be using the same grind setting uh, we'll be using the um, WDT tools, right? Uh, but um, the way that this tool does the job is slightly different, right? This is this will take slightly longer than the spinning one, right? So in a, in a, in a short while, you're going to see uh, how each of these things actually works, right? So I'll, I'll definitely put this link in the description the description link uh, down below, right? If you want to download this and if you have a 3D printer, right? You should, you should try um, to download this model, which is... It's pretty neat, right? And especially with the stand, right? Um, you don't have to worry that you know you will accidentally poke yourself, you know, if you if you leave it at the side of your work workstation, right? So let's get to the uh, making of coffee, right? All right. So for today's um, um, espresso extraction, um, the grinder I'll be using will be the Forenzato All Ground, right? I will bring you closer. Uh, when I grind coffee, so they can see um, the quality of the coffee they come, uh, that's coming out from the foreign other all ground. And uh, why am I using it uh, very often nowadays? So let me bring you closer as I grind the coffee. So this is the white version, right? Currently our shop has the white and black as well as the limited edition, the green uh, slightly, um, slightly brighter than the army green color. Right, with the silver uh, accessories, like the silver knob at the side and the silver ring at the top. Right, so as you can see, it is handsome for inside the ground grinder. Right, um, of course, it's the hopper version. Right, um, it, it has a smaller hopper, which is the metal one, uh, which is sold separately as accessories. And uh, this is the touch screen monitor. Right, you can actually use it to start and stop. And of course, you can also use your time dose, single shot, double shot, and manual. So everything can be touch. It's a touch screen one. Uh, the touch screen is quite nicely uh, designed, right? And it's actually a, a, a lateral one uh, from the top to bottom and not the squarish type of display, display that's like that. This is not the touch screen, right? The, 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 switch, uh, the switches is actually here, right? So this is the Forenzato All Ground. So let's look at the quality of the grind that's coming out from the Forenzato All Ground.
right? I do not need to use any dosing funnel, right? Because I can um, sort of um, do some dialing to set in such a way that I'll always get uh, around 18 grams of coffee uh, powder from the foreign side ground. So now let's actually prepare the um, um, the coffee ground by using a WDT. So let me move over my station here to show you the process of doing that. Right, so of course, the first one I'm going to use this, the 3D printer WDT tools. And to use this, right, I'll recommend that you have something so, something like the dosing funnel. Right, so that when you when you stir, the coffee will not come out of your powder filter. Uh, I, I, I'm thinking, does it really matter if, let's say, I don't do WD, D, uh, WDT and I use my foreign data or ground, right? So I think um, to use as a control, I will pull three shots today, right? Of course, the first shots, I, since I already started WDT, right? So um, I will use the first one with the uh, 3D printer version. Then the second one, I will use uh, the, the one with the spinning WDT. Right, and the third one we use as a control without any WTT. Right, straight away we'll distribute and then we'll tap. Right, so gently knock it down. Right, and then we can actually. So, this is the after you have WDT, right, with this. So, now I can put it back, and then uh, usually I'll do a gentle tap. Right, then after that, I will actually use my distribution tool to do a distribution. Right, and uh, before I have the auto temper, I used to use this. This is called the cookie press, whereby it is uh, it, it is not um, a calibrated uh, force uh, kind of temper. It is a temper that allows uh, always parallel temp. Right, there's a spring inside, but the spring is not calibrated in such a way that it always give you consistent force, right? This is more towards the leveling temper. So when you temp down, you will always be leveled. That's the whole purpose of the temp, uh, this cookie press, right? So let me bring you over to the uh, um, my auto temper from Perfects. So I'm uh, so far I've been loving this uh, temper from Perfects. Really easy to use, right? Um, let me show you. Right, this is actually the Perfects auto temper. Right, currently it's actually adjusted to 20 kg of uh, force. Right, so to temp it, it's very simple. Just put your portal filter in. Oh, okay. Okay, so I, I think I should adjust this uh, to guide my portal filter better. Uh, because right now, uh, I think there's a gap between the portal filter and the um, and the and the fork, so let me adjust it now, right? So you can see it's now slanted because I didn't put it properly. So let me unscrew this. Uh, by the way, the Allen key comes with uh, the auto temper from Perfects. Right, so now let me adjust this. Okay, remember always switch off your grinder before you do the adjustment. Now I will lock it up. Ah, still slanted. Better job. Right, so now it's secured with two fingers underneath. Right, I have to find the the, the screw so that I can tighten it. So now it's uh, okay. It's, I think it's too tight. I have to loosen it a little bit. Okay.
so um, for this temper it will be a little bit more uh, if you are using the same photo filter right then should be okay right but if you are if you like to keep switching a portal filter right uh, for example you have a uh, quite a few portal filter to choose from then you you may find this a little bit more troublesome because you will need to adjust this temper so that it will be uh you'll be closer to the metal temper uh, that's coming down right and then you will get you uh closer to the temper and then the the I think in, in a way that the temping will be more consistent. Right, okay, I think this is pretty good. It's already quite level. So since we already moved uh, quite a lot, I'm just going to throw this coffee away. Uh, and then we'll do another one, right? Okay, before we move on to do another one, let's test the temper. Mm, now it's better because um, just now there was too much leeway which allowed me to move my uh, temper slightly right and it didn't land directly on into the uh, fuel basket so now it's perfect okay so now let's do it quickly Right. Uh, since we are restarting the shot, uh, I think for the first one, I will not do any um, distribution. Right. I will be using this as a control. Right. So I will just not distribute. I will probably just level the coffee. Knock it. Then we'll straight away distribute. And then we will go ahead and tap. Yeah, so it's done. So now uh, I'm also not going to use my park screen because I want to see, um, I want to make sure that this is not affecting my extraction. So I will just be using a, a, a park without a park screen now. And today we, I'm not using the VBM Super, right? I'm using the VBM Dova Junior, which is a heat exchanger with a PID, right? So this is the machine we're going to use today. Um, yep, it comes, uh, the difference is, of course, this one is a um, vibratory pump, right, um, heat exchanger, single boiler. Right, I always like to give a quick flush before I pull my shots. I, I know this is a PID machine, which probably don't really need to flush. But I think uh, by flushing it, I'm able to regulate the temperature better. So remember, this first shot is actually from um, straight to temp uh, without any WDT, right? So let's look at the, uh, the shot. Okay. All right, about 27 seconds. So we are getting to the top, right? So let's check out the uh, quality of the shot. Good crema, right? And um, this rose, uh, we roasted this in probably July so the beans is about a month old right from the roast state and uh, this is an open bag so we'll leave this aside for it to cool and then we'll do a taste test later on so remember this is the shot without any WDT right and of course without the uh, park screen you can see that the park will tend to be a little bit more wet right and um, I believe um, if I uh, let's let's try to knock this out and see uh, whether it will, it will leave any mess behind right Hmm, actually not too bad, right? So there's a little bit of a coffee stain at the side, but generally this is uh, cleaner than expected, right? Ok, 
okay right now let's prepare the second one right and now i'll be using the uh, 3d printer wdt tools uh, to do the wdt Right, let me bring you closer. Oh yeah, one more thing is uh, usually if you're going to use this 3D printer one, uh, I would suggest you use a dosing funnel or dosing ring, right, so that it, the coffee will not come out as you stir. Uh, first, I'll go deep, so you can see it is actually going all the way down, but just before it touches the uh, the filter basket. So I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna do a like a small spinning, right around the edge. Right then, I will move uh, to the top. I will do another round. Now this is the 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 needles are now closer to the surface. And right at the top, I will just go by another round. Right, so this is actually my workflow. If I'm going to use the manual WDT tools, right, then after that, of course, gently knock it down, do a quick distribution. Right, then we will do a temp on the auto temper. Right, so now let's move on to the extraction for the second shot. So this is the one with a 3D printed WDT. And one thing I strongly recommend the puck screen is now you can see that there's a lot of coffee uh, powder that's staining the uh, filter of uh, uh, the shower screen. So right now I have to perform a flush. Right, to clean off the um, remaining coffee before I pull a shot. So let's go on to pull the second shot. Right, I think uh, there's a slight channeling, right? I can I can feel that the coffee is spraying out. Uh, not too sure why, and somehow the extraction is not as consistent as my previous shot. Right, so um, as I mentioned, um. I would like to take this opportunity to mention this is not a definitely test because um, I have to repeat this um, probably in a future video. I'm going to do a few more videos just to compare uh, the consistency of the shot with and without WTT uh, and see which one is actually better, right? So you can see the second shot actually uh, is not as good as the first one in terms of the general um, uh, shot. I can see that this shot has um, quite a bit of channeling, right? Let's move on to the third shot. But if you look at the shot quality, right, um, I think because this is a crew glass, the crew glass tend to be the wider at the top, so the crema also looks a little bit lesser. But this is definitely not saying that it produces less crema, right? And before we move on to the third shot, you can see now the part is stuck. Uh, together with the shower screen and this is something that with a puck screen you can definitely remove right so i'm just going to use my bottle filter to gently push it and the part will drop out you can see the part is a little uh, definitely more soggy uh, as compared to the one with a puck screen and the shower shower screen again is very dirty so i have to flush it again all right okay so let's move on to the extraction for the third one Right, so you can see 
this one is definitely more dirty than the previous one so let's clean out the coffee coffee powder Right, so let's continue to make the third cup of coffee. Right, and this one is going to be uh, using the spinning WDT tools. Right, so with the spinning WDT tools, right, I'm just going to put this on and then just going to gently spin, spin a few times, spin it slowly. Right, and then you can see that there's a couple of holes on top and it's left behind by the needles. Right, so this is from the spinning WDT tools, right. And right now, I'm just going to knock it down gently, do a quick leveling, and then we'll move towards the tamping. Right, it's tamped, and now let's move on to the extraction. Right, so this is the shot number three. Right, let's pull a shot and see how it goes. All right, 30 seconds. Right, this is the uh, volume we have extracted. Right, uh, you'll, be, uh, you'll be the judge, right? So let me know in the comment section down below which extraction do you think is the best. Shot number one is without WDT, uh, straight away grinded from Forenzato, um, straight away into uh, the portal filter, and then I just do a simple um, distribution and then we tamp it down right the tamping force is consistent so there's nothing um, varying about the tamping force the only thing that's changing is the distribution I mean it's the WTT method right so the first shot is without WTT so now let's uh, bring the shot over okay let's remove the polar filter and see the underneath right so you can see uh, there's a ring of uh, coffee powder that's uh, stuck to the shower screen. So again, just do a quick flush. Right, to clean off the shower head. And then we are, we're going to taste the coffee. So let's try to knock out the coffee. Right, same thing, right, you can see that the edges is very similar to the one with uh, 3D printed WTT. The, um, there tends to be uh, quite a bit of coffee ground that start at the side. All right, so now let's go and go ahead and taste the coffee. All right, so we have pulled three shots and um, I'm, I'm going to try the shots now, All right? So the first shots, right um, it has cooled down so um, but it is a double layer glass so I guess it's still pretty warm right this is the shot before any WDT so cheers wow it's very sweet definitely has the caramel wow this is really good Wow, very balanced shots, really nice.
right so this is the this is the shot before wdt right so the, the the thing is if you are if your grinder is able to do a good job do you need wdt i'm not too sure right if you grind directly to a polar filter i i uh, maybe i will not make a judgment now right let me try the other two uh, shots of coffee but before that let me get some water to rinse my palate Right, shot number two. Right, this is the one um, from the three printed WDD tools. Um, to be fair, this shot I pulled slightly longer. So again, this is not fair because I was too focused on the bottomless extraction and I forgot about the shot time. It runs about 40 seconds. So the shot is going to be slightly more diluted as compared to the rest right and uh, if you see the extraction towards the second to third part of the extraction the extraction start to run thin uh, and, and it start to extract a lot faster so cheers ah okay this shot is uh, not as good as the first one definitely right the body has been reduced quite drastically the robustness and the uh, you know the body of the shot is uh, greatly reduced uh, the sweetness is also reduced it is still sweet but it's not as sweet as the first one the first one just have a sweetness and body right right so let me move on to the shot number three shot number three was done under about 31 seconds right right cheers The body is there. The sweetness is there. Let me try the first cup again. But the first shot gave me better body, right? And uh, slightly better sweetness. Let me try one more time. Yeah, yes, that's, that's, that's my, um, that's the taste I'm getting. So, um, that, this is definitely not a conclusive test, right? So, from out of the three shots, personally, I feel that the first shot is the best uh, without any WDT, right? So, I'm not, too, I'm not too sure whether this is the case for you, right? So, uh, this is the time whereby I want to find out from you, right? Um, what do you think about your WDT? Um, have you been doing WDT all the, all the time? right um, how good is your grinder uh, in producing the the coffee ground right so um, maybe you can try to do with and without a wtt and then give you a try uh, to taste the difference between the two right for me today i've tried this and i, I started to wonder whether if your grinder is really good, doing a very good job and if you are dosing directly from your polar uh, from the grinder directly to your polar filter right the grind is already very fluffy uh, do you actually need WDT, right? So that, that's, that's a question for us to answer and also for you to maybe check it out by yourself, right? So thank you for joining me today. Um, I will definitely be doing more tests on this to see whether um, the WDT with a good grinder actually affects uh, the quality of the extraction, right? So, so far today, I didn't find that the extraction is better. The taste is not better with WDT, right? So let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about this, right? So this is Siwa once again. Thank you for joining me today, right? Um, I hope you're having fun uh, seeing the process and um, I hope you like what we do. And if you like what we do, do consider subscribing to our channel, like our videos and share it to your friends who are fellow coffee nerds and coffee lovers, right? And uh, remember to ring the bell, right? If you want to stay updated with our uh, you know, future content so that you will not miss a single one when we release them. Uh, recently, we've been doing more premiers, which means that I'll be joining in together with you uh, as we launch the video. We will watch it together, right? And I will, I'll be there to be with you uh, and we can chat on the uh, the topics we're discussing today, right? So I hope you do join our, you know, uh, premiere, uh, which is I'm, I'm going to launch it tonight at about 9 p.m., right? Um, Singapore time, which is GMT plus 8. So I will see you, right? So thank you for joining me today and uh, have a good weekend 
and uh, stay safe. You can see now the top cover is has been removed, exposing the uh, the acupuncture needles inside. So you can see the acup acupuncture needle can be slide out and in. So if ever you bend one of these needles, right? These needles are not expensive to replace, and you can always pull out and then you can put in a new one, right? So it is actually very easy uh, to service this if you ever need to replace the needles, right? So this is pretty neat, right? And uh, I, I love the stand, right? You can just rest on it, right? And of course, uh, just screw it back later, right? So it's a very good design, right? I'll put the link uh, where to download this file um, in the description later. And one more thing to consider when you are printing this is you can see, I'm not sure when I can remember, I can focus, right? You can see that there are holes here. Right, for the needles to uh, exit from the base, right, if your printing parameter is not set well, right, the holes will be fused together and your needles will be unable to come out, right. So, uh, you probably have to uh, check your uh, printer. When you when the printer is printing in your first layer, make sure that the uh, nozzle is not too close to the printing bit, so that the, uh, the the plastic that is oozing up is squashed, and then it will seal up the hole, right? So if it is seal up, then the, you have, it is a full print, and you have to reprint this again. Right? This is just some training, three D printing advice that I have, because I have been doing three D printing for six years now, and uh, this is some of the. Uh, um, some of the things that I have uh, learned about uh, as, well, uh, as I truly really pretty and learned along the way, right?